Okay, here is the first of several video lectures for the humanistic approach or humanistic theories as they pertain to personality for Marshall University, uh, February 28th, 2018. Again, just like with the first series of lectures, I'm being an opportunist here. I'm taking advantage of the teacher strike and us not actually meeting tonight and using this as my opportunity to make the the mandatory theory lecture part of this course um, a little more palatable for you. I think the video lecture format for this theory stuff is probably better so we can save uh, stuff for in class that may be a little more interesting. Um, same deal here. You want to treat this just like we were in class. This is stuff we have to cover for this course and you want to take some good notes on this. Um, I will probably be spot checking your notes and you will be accountable for this just like the stuff with lifespan you'll be accountable for this stuff on the next exam at some point. So, Also check Blackboard. There will be some instruction on what part of the textbook to kind of look at and or some, uh, some readers that I'll attach that might be helpful with this too. So kind of be looking out for that. Um, the humanistic approach to psychology began in the 1960s and 1970s and actually still influences psychology today. Uh, this approach was sort of in opposition to psychoanalysis. We've already talked about Freud and the, psychoana the psychoanalytic theories of personality development. So this kind of goes against that, those theories, um, arguing that they presented a too limited and demeaning image of human nature. Uh, the behaviorist stuff, but we'll talk about that later. Um, we'll talk more about the humanistic stuff. This approach is represented largely by the works of Abraham, Mas Abraham Maslow and Carl Rogers. And their theories emphasize human strengths and aspirations, conscious free will, the fulfillment of human potential. It also presents a flattering and optimistic image of human nature. It asserts that we are active, creative people or beings and that we are concerned with growth and self-actualization. So these, th this description is kind of different than what we're used to hearing with behaviorists, especially the psychoanalytic stuff that we've already covered. If you remember with psychoanalysis, there was a large emphasis on the unconscious um, and that human nature was not always good. With this perspective, it's more about conscious free will, knowing and understanding what you're doing and fulfilling human potential and more of an optimistic outlook on human and personality development. Uh, with Maslow, he's famously known for his hierarchy of needs. Um, and it's usually presented in a pyramid fashion. You have safety needs, physiological needs, esteem needs, self uh, love and affection needs, and self-actualizing needs. Uh, Maslow proposed a, hier a hierarchy of five needs that activate and direct human behavior. Um, these five needs, and we'll talk about them individually as well, uh, we're talking about an arrangement of innate needs from strongest to weakest that activates our behavior. So in other words, you can't progress from one level to the next until you have those needs met at the very basic level. So at the bottom you have what are called physiological needs, breathing, food, water, sex, sleep, excretion, your basic physiological stuff that we all have to engage in and, and, and do. Um, until you have a place to live, you have food and water, you're able to sleep, you're not going to be able or be willing to worry about the needs above this, like security of your home or finding intimate relationships with others or doing well at school. Um, a kid who comes to school who doesn't have food to eat often doesn't have a place to live. This, this kid isn't going to be worried about making an A in math class. So we have to progress up the pyramid and we don't always get to the top. All of us don't always get to self-actualizing. Uh, but we certainly can't climb up until we meet the needs at one level. All the needs at one level. So that's important to kind of understand for your notes. Now let's call that the end of the first part here. Thanks.